You're listening to The Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. And I'm Carolyn Nelson. We go right straight down to Phoenix to Gene Miller for the Monday Night Metal Report. Good evening. Hello, Gene. What's happening? Well, let's see here. Gold today had a high of 382.40 and a low of 380.40 to close at 381.40, up $2.80. Silver had a high of 5.37 and a low of five and a quarter to close at five dollars and 36 cents, up 13 cents. Uh, platinum had a high of 3.96.30, uh, a low of 3.93.50 to close at 3.95.50, up 65 cents. And the Dow had a high of 38.52, a low of 38.32. To close at 38.32, down six dollars and seventy cents. Uh, one thing that uh, I'm sure everybody is well aware of, and maybe you'll even be talking about it tonight, uh, the deal with the Brady Bill over the weekend that went into law, and something that you know it, it kind of dawned on me 20 years ago, 10 years ago, probably would have never imagined something like this being passed, and, and uh, slowly but surely the our constitutional rights are being eroded away from us, and and and, uh, uh, and people think, well, uh, about money. Well, the dollar is going to be here forever. Uh, nothing's going to happen. Uh, we'll always be able to buy gold. I can always buy it next week, and I, I can always buy it six months from now. I can always get it later. And uh, we probably thought that about uh, to, about guns, and this is probably just one step in in a, in a series of many steps to control. Your, your personal rights is to bear arms and, and to take those personal freedoms away from you. Folks, we've got to wake up. It's, it's uh, like I said last week in reading that article, and uh, to you that are clients, that article went out to you, and you should be getting that shortly. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's on our doorstep. It's here now. And, folks, we've got to be taking action now as to getting ourselves prepared, uh, not only with metals, but the, the, whole, the whole gamut about... Uh, what it's going to take to survive in this uh, world as, as it's rapidly changing. Uh, we have information that will help you uh, on certain aspects, on the financial aspects of it, uh, because that, there's, that is part of our lives. Finances is part of our lives. We can't, we can't ignore that. We can't uh, bury our heads in the sand. It's only one part, but it is a, a part, and we have, uh, uh, you know, we have lots of information, but information is only good if you take action and use it. Uh, give us a call. Uh, we'll be, f- be more than happy to talk with you and sit down and, you know, formulate a game plan with you. You should know our number by now. It's 1-800-289-2646, uh, 1-800-BUY-COIN. Uh, and, Bill, I just want to let you know I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I get calls, I mean, on a daily basis uh, thanking us for sponsoring you because of what you're doing. And I just want to thank you for what you're doing uh, uh, my hat's off to you, sir. Well, thank you, Gene, and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, folks, call 1-800-289-2646. That's 1-800-289-2646. It wasn't long ago that listeners to this program were able to buy silver one-ounce rounds for $4 a piece, and now the price of silver is way over $5, so you guys better wake up out there. Tonight we began a three-part series, ladies and gentlemen, on the occult history of the Third Reich. The occult history of the Third Reich. Make sure that you do not miss one single episode of it. And all of you people who have been scammed and caught up in this Aryan uh, uh, master race uh, bullshit, and that's exactly what it is, listen very closely and you'll find out how you've been conned, and you'll find out that uh, everything that happened back in Germany during the 20s and 30s is happening again in the United States today, and all of you are going to make the connections between the New Age, and it really isn't the New Age, it's the Old Age, because it all took place a long time before, and it's just surfaced again brought to you by the same people. You're going to see the connections between the Third Reich, the Knights Templars, the Thule Society, uh, Freemasonry, the British uh, Israel movement, 
uh, you're going to see that uh, <laughs> up until Helena uh, Petrovna Blavatsky came along, uh, there was no super race called Aryans. And you're going to find out uh, uh, all of these things linked together is going to bring you the most incredible sense of deja vu that you've ever experienced in your life. And I hope, I hope you're man enough or woman enough to look yourself in the mirror and say, honestly, I've been had. Straighten your act up, find the truth, and stop being led by the nose by these people who would divide us just to put the chains around our ankles. Make sure you have pen and paper by your side, and folks, listen carefully. In 36. A state which will sterilize, enslave, and systematically murder millions of men, women, and children. Entire peoples are to be swept from the face of the planet. Whole populations are to be scientifically reduced those who remain, preserved only for their value as slaves. The world is to be subject to a new order. observers of 1930s Germany, National Socialism is an enigma. No conventional political explanation seems sufficient to account for such an alien phenomenon. A whole world of strange rituals and beliefs seems to have risen from nowhere to mesmerize millions of Germans. Over the whole extraordinary spectacle of pageantry and military might presides the messianic figure of Adolf Hitler. And everywhere there is a mysterious and ever-present symbol, the emblem of the swastika. of Nuremberg consummate the mystical unity of the party, the people, and their leader. The climax of the Nuremberg rally is a mass display of up to 32,000 swastikas. A foreign reporter finds himself overawed by the force of the spectacle he is witnessing. Hitler, he writes, is restoring pageantry and mysticism to the drab lives of the 20th century. The rally has the mystical and religious fervor of an Easter mass in a great Gothic cathedral. The ranks of the Hitler Youth sing of their newfound faith. No evil priest can prevent us from feeling that we are the children of Hitler. Away with incense and holy water. The swastika brings salvation on earth. The symbol of the swastika will win the devotion of millions. 
its rise will chart the growth of a strange and terrifying creed. The doctrine of National Socialism. A doctrine born in the world of the occult. The mission of Aryan man. The mystery of the blood. The soul of the race. These dogmas, fundamental to the Nazi vision, will lead Europe into the realms of nightmare. Their symbol is the swastika. The swastika was adopted by the Nazi party in 1920, but it was neither the party's invention nor its discovery. Since the end of the 19th century, the swastika had been spreading amongst the peoples of Europe. And everywhere, it was a sign of a new and powerful force, a deepening fascination with the arcane, the esoteric, and the occult. The revival of the occult in Europe has its roots deep in the trauma of the Industrial Revolution. By the dawn of the 20th century, the lives of millions have been changed out of all recognition. Cities, the traditional centers of commerce and fashionable life, have been transformed into sprawling industrial slums. Yet, everywhere, the catchphrase is progress. There is a widespread belief that a new world is coming. A world in which the ills of the past will be cured by science, by technology, and by democracy. Many, far from welcoming the dawn of a new age, are deeply disturbed. Would the Industrial Revolution had come a decline in the power of traditional authority? The political power of the landowner is waning in favor of a new class of industrialists and financiers. Hierarchy is being threatened by democracy. It appears to many as if the world of beauty and order is disintegrating before their very eyes. Worst of all, religion itself seems in mortal danger. Cherished beliefs, accepted as true for all time, are being questioned by science. The ancient Himalayan kingdom of Tibet. From the late 19th century, Tibet is the mysterious and forbidding destination of a steady stream of travelers from the industrialized world. Many, disillusioned with the certainties of science, come in search of another deeper knowledge. One such traveler is a Russian adventurous and self-proclaimed telepath, Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. In 1888, Madame Blavatsky publishes a book, The Secret Doctrine, in which she claims that deep in an underground Himalayan monastery, she has been shown an ancient occult text. In it were revealed the mystical secrets of the universe and the future course of human history. In The Secret Doctrine, Madame Blavatsky describes the universe as having fallen from pure spirit into base matter, darkness and chaos but soon it will rise once more to reach the pinnacle of spirituality. Madame Blavatsky claims that this knowledge and more she has learned through initiation into the mysteries of seven esoteric symbols. Of these seven symbols, one she believed to be more potent than any other. The symbol is the swastika. In Tibetan mythology, the swastika is the sign of Agni, 
the God of the sun, of fire, and of creation. And always, whether clockwise or anti-clockwise, whether curved or straight-armed, it is the symbol of good fortune. For Madame Blavatsky, each cycle of creation has associated with it seven stages of human evolution. Stages she calls root races. The race which will begin once more, the ascent from darkness to the light of the spirit she names Aryan. In the occult teachings of Madame Blavatsky, the sign of the Aryan is the swastika. The Nuremberg Rally of 1934 has as its theme a mystical concept. The triumph of the will. Homage is paid to a fundamental dogma in the Nazi creed of the swastika. Pure will, the expression of the soul of the race, will overcome the forces of darkness and of chaos. In the world of National Socialism, the race of light, of order, and of the spirit is the Aryan race. Decades before the swastika was adopted by the Nazi party, a periodical published in Germany by an American occult society became the first German publication to carry a swastika on its cover. The society's founder was Madame Helena Blavatsky. It would be the followers of Madame Blavatsky who would introduce to the peoples of Germany and Austria the occult doctrine of the Aryan. The Prussian-Austrian War of 1866 had left German-speaking Austrians an isolated minority in a predominantly Slavic Austria-Hungary. By the early 20th century, an intense longing has grown for unification with Germany. Hundreds of German-Austrian societies are founded, committed to the romantic revival of ancient Germanic mythology. A folk federation with a membership of over 100,000 calling itself the Germanenbund holds festivals, founds a Germanic calendar, revives ancient rituals and appeals for unity in a new spiritual German nationhood. The Germanenbund was inspired by the writings of an Austrian mystic. Guido von Liszt, born in Vienna in 1848 claimed to have psychic visions of the past in which she was initiated into the secrets of the ancient Teutonic tribes. Liszt's visions told him of a Germanic religion, the worship of the god Wotan. His dream is to rediscover the occult heritage of its long-vanished priesthood. According to Norse legend, the god-magician Wotan, leader of the dead heroes of Valhalla, had won by suffering a priceless store of esoteric knowledge. He had discovered the secret of the runes. Liszt knew that the runes were the alphabet of a primitive system of writing. But to Germanic peoples from the second century to the Middle Ages, they were also magical symbols. Symbols which Liszt believed possessed a deep esoteric meaning. Far, the rune of wealth, wandering and destruction. Ur, the rune of wild oxen, regeneration and sacrifice. North, the compulsion of fate. Sea, the rune of the sun and of victory. To Guido von Liszt, runes were the key to the occult knowledge of the ancient Germanic peoples. Within a decade of his death in 1919, the runes would have become elements in a new language.
the language of National Socialism. The Sieg Victory Room, emblem of the Hitler Youth. The Double Sieg, emblem of the Schutzstaffel, the SS. The Apple Room, symbol of Richard Walter Dari's Ministry of Agriculture, the Rune of Inheritance, the Rune of German Soil. The Man Room, the Rune of Death, which in time will replace the cross in the graveyards of the SS. Study of the runes is required of all SS officers. Of the many strange and mystical symbols which have found a place in the new order of National Socialism, one dominates all others. von List called the swastika the twice high holy secret of constant generation. He recounts a Nordic tale in which the god Mundel Fiori whisks the cosmos into being. The swastika is the fire whisk, the very act of religion. A Nazi hymn proclaims of the cross is gone now. The sun whisk shall arise. And so with God we shall be free at last and gift our people back their honor. By 1909, the occult visions of Guido von Liszt have made him famous throughout the German-speaking lands. To Liszt, every stream, hill and forest in Austria was associated with a Germanic god or spirit. In the devices of heraldic shields, in the beams of Austrian houses, in folk customs and rituals, Liszt claimed to see evidence that Austria was and always had been part of the German homeland. For two generations, German-speaking Austrians had looked to Germany for reassurance and a sense of identity. But events were about to occur which would place in doubt the very future of the fatherland itself. 1914, the Great War. For the first time in history, the might of industry is unleashed on the battlefield. Nothing could have prepared the peoples of Europe for slaughter on such an unimaginable scale. As the war grinds on and casualties mount, frontline soldiers on both sides of no man's land take to the wearing of charms and amulets. In the ranks of Germans and Austrians, the most popular of all magic talismans is the swastika. The swastika medallions and amulets worn in the trenches of the Great War are based on the researches of Guido von Liszt. By now, an influential and wealthy society devoted to the teachings of the master has already been formed in Vienna. It is the Liszt Society, which supplies designs to the manufacturers of swastika talismans. The swastika, now spreading amongst the German armies, is fast becoming the emblem of militant German nationalism. But since 1908, it had acquired another, even more ominous meaning.
shortly before the outbreak of the Great War, Liszt had incorporated the occult teachings of Madame Helena Blavatsky into his own German mythology. Now he no longer refers to ancient Germans or Teutons. Instead, the tribes who populate his visions, he names Aryans. In Madame Blavatsky's writings, the Aryans are the race of upward spiritual evolution, the race whose sign is the swastika. In Hitler's Mein Kampf, the meaning of the swastika to the Nazi party is made clear. In the swastika, he writes, we see the mission for the struggle for the victory of Aryan man. I am ganz in Leben, in Hals, Sinn und Speck zu geben hat. Es will sich so etwas auch nicht, wenn diesem Erde nicht ein großer Befehl zu kommen ist. Und den Befehl gab uns kein irdischer Vorgesetzter, den gab uns der Gott, der unser Volk geschaffen hat. By the 1930s and the great Nazi rallies at Nuremberg, the concept of the Aryan has become a cornerstone of the party's mystical ideology. The grand design for the Aryan state has already existed for over 20 years. Its author was Guido von Liszt. In the slaughter and misery of the Great War, the writings of Guido von Liszt assume greater and greater significance for the soldiers of the German and Austrian armies. To Liszt, the Great War is the conflict which will purge the world of evil and herald a new age. Democracy and materialism will be destroyed on the battlefields of Europe. Victory will usher in an Aereo German Empire. By 1911, Liszt had already described in detail his vision of the future Germanic state. It will be a strict hierarchy in which leaders will be obeyed without question. It will be patriarchal, with full rights only for the male heads of family. Only Aryans will be entitled to citizenship. There will be strict laws to ensure the purity of the race. Every family will keep a record of its ancestry as proof of its Aryan blood. By 1918, the conflict which Liszt called the holiest war had cost the lives of two million Germans. That same year, the German armies had won a series of military victories. The Russian enemy had collapsed, and yet Germany had sued for peace. To men who had suffered so much, it seems like a colossal betrayal. Then comes the greatest shock of all. The Kaiser is forced into exile. The terms imposed on Germany by the Treaty of Versailles are harsh and punitive. Key industrial regions must be handed over to the victors. The German army is to be reduced to a fraction of its former strength. Heavy reparations must be paid when war has already left the German economy on the verge of collapse. The Versailles Treaty will fatally undermine the authority of the new Weimar Republic. The ministers who signed its terms will become known as the November Criminals. As 
food supplies dwindle and a once proud nation is reduced to dependence and misery, Germany threatens to descend into anarchy. The infant Weimar Republic quickly becomes a battleground of warring factions. In the major cities, revolutionary socialist republics are declared by councils of workers and soldiers. Nationalists and monarchist groups muster private armies and mobilize for counter-revolution. Behind the factions on both sides is the hidden hand of conspiracy. Among the many shadowy groups organizing nationalist counter-revolution is the wealthy and powerful Fool Society. Fool is the Munich Lodge of the nationalists and anti-Semitic German order. The German order is dedicated to the occult teachings of Guido von Liszt. On November the 9th, 1918, Rudolf von Sebottendorf, master of Thule, addresses a hastily convened meeting of the Lodge. Socialist republics have been declared in both Munich and Berlin. Yesterday, we experienced the collapse of everything which is familiar, dear, and valuable to us. I am determined to pledge Thule to this struggle. Our God is Balvata. His room is the Arun. The Arun signifies Aryan, primal fire, the sun, and the eagle. Thule will fight until the swastika rises victoriously out of the icy darkness. In the following months, along with other nationalist groups, Thule stockpiles weapons and trains volunteers. On April the 30th, 1919, 20,000 men, including strong detachments armed and led by Thule, storm Munich in a bloody counter-revolution. On the helmets of many nationalist volunteers is the emblem of the swastika. The success of Thule in the 1919 Munich counter-revolution would have far-reaching consequences for the Germany of the 1920s. A shadowy organization devoted to arcane rituals and the creation of an Aryan Empire would attract support from the highest levels of German society. The secret German order parent order of Thule was founded in 1912. It was and would remain virulently anti-Semitic and anti-democratic. The membership of the Thule and of all the lodges of the German order is drawn from the ranks of aristocrats, industrialists, lawyers, judges and medical men. All are required to prove that they and their spouses are of pure Aryan blood. Applicants must submit details of hair, eye, and skin color. Hair must be blonde to dark blonde. Eyes must be blue or light brown. The skin must be fair. For membership of the Berlin Lodge, even the shape of the skull is taken into account. By the autumn of 1918, Rudolf von Sebottendorf, master of the Thule Lodge, had attempted to extend the influence of Thule's ideas by secretly sponsoring the formation of a workers' discussion group. Unknown to most members of the group, its chairman, Karl Harrer, would belong to Thule. The most active member of the workers' group is a locksmith, Anton Drexler. By the end of 1918, Drexler had proposed that the workers' circle be formed into a new political party. The Thule chairman agreed. On January the 5th, 1919, the new party is formally founded in a Munich tavern, the First and Felderhof. It is to be called the German Workers' Party. On September the 12th, 1919, ten months after the foundation of the party, an army spy is sent by his superiors to attend one of its meetings. The spy is a 30-year-old Austrian war veteran. His name is Adolf Hitler.
Within weeks, Hitler has joined the party, become a regular speaker at Beer Hall political meetings, and has been appointed to the party's steering committee. Within four months, the party has changed its name. It has become the National Socialist German Workers' Party. the swastika was formally adopted as the symbol of the new Nazi party. The form chosen, straight-armed and anti-clockwise, was chosen by Adolf Hitler himself. Until now, the nationalist swastika had no set direction. The swastika talismans of the Great War were vertical and tilted, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Hermann Göring, future chief of the German Air Force, as a nationalist volunteer of 1919, wore a vertical anti-clockwise swastika. In the ranks of the nationalist counter-revolutionaries, both clockwise and anti-clockwise forms were commonplace. The curved swastika of Fool, chosen from the many popularized by Guido von Liszt, will not be forgotten by the party to which Thule gave birth. It will live on on the belt buckles of the brown-shirted stormtroopers. The ceremonial swords of the Luftwaffe will bear the Thule swastika. Decorations for anti-partisan warfare on the Eastern Front will display the Thule dagger and the curved swastika. Whatever the form in which the swastika will appear in the banners and regalia of National Socialism, its meaning will remain the same. It is the meaning claimed for it by Madame Blavatsky and Guido von Liszt. It is the sign of creation, the sign of the mystical destiny of Aryan man. By the 1920s, the spread of Charles Darwin's theories of evolution has had a profound impact on nationalist consciousness. A new explanation for the differences between cultures and for the rise and fall of civilizations is now possible. Increasingly, laws of inheritance are believed to be the key to history. The artistic achievements of a nation, its courage in war, its temperament, even its spiritual life, are all believed to be the legacy of race. It is a belief that will culminate in the official Nazi doctrine that each race has its soul, and each soul its race. The myth of the Aryan, developed in the occult teachings of Madame Blavatsky and Guido von Liszt, has by the late 1920s spread throughout Europe, the United States and Britain. And with it, fascination with the swastika. The stories of India, by the British author Rudyard Kipling, appear emblazoned with the seal of the swastika. In Scotland, the discovery of swastika markings in the Pictish cave inspired the creation of the swastika kilt pin. In the United States, costly earrings and brooches appear in the form of the swastika. During the Great War, the British War Savings Drive has a swastika as its official emblem. Its administrators are awarded swastika lapel badges in recognition of their services to the nation. By 1930, members of the British Druidic cults display swastikas on their ceremonial robes. In 1932, an English periodical appears with the title, The Superman. It is devoted to physical culture, and on its cover is a border of swastikas. The Superman, as well as features on sport and health, carries articles by respected British scientists 
warning of the racial contamination of Saxon Britain. Addressing the massed ranks of the Hitler Youth speaks of Germany, of the blood, and of the continuity of the race. In the coming year, a series of new German laws will be signed into existence by Adolf Hitler. The First Reich Law of Citizenship will divide the people of Germany into two classes. Those of pure Aryan blood will be full citizens of the Reich. Non-Aryans will be reduced to mere subjects of the state. A second law, the law for the protection of German blood and German honor, will forbid pure-blooded Aryans from marrying people of Jewish descent. Soon after, the measure will be extended to forbid intermarriage between Aryans and all non-Aryans. The Germanic vision of Guido von Liszt is becoming a reality. In 1935, a foundation is established in what is now National Socialist Germany. The Alonerb is the ancestral heritage society for the study of German prehistory. Its official task is to investigate the territorial extent and spirit of the Nordic Indo-Germanic race. The Alonerb will grow to over 50 departments, controlling all archaeology in the Third Reich. By 1937, it will be the research branch of the SS. Arnold researchers dispatched to Tibet, South America, Greece and Rome conclude that all were once populated by great Aryan civilizations. The work of the Arnold will reinforce what are already deeply held beliefs. Civilization and everything that is valuable are products of the Aryan soul. The way is open for Adolf Hitler to claim if we divide the human race into three categories founders, maintainers and destroyers of culture the Aryan stock alone can be considered to represent the first category. Munich, 1937. National Socialism celebrates the history of the Aryans and the sacred mystery of the swastika. The 
solemn ritual has been organized by Alfred Rosenberg, official ideologist of the party and one-time associate of the Thule Society. Today, Rosenberg proclaims, a new mythos is dawning, the mythos of the blood, the belief that the godly essence of man himself is to be defended through the blood. The Nordic race represents the mysterium which has overthrown and replaced the old sacrament. Already in the rituals of the Hitler Youth, the Christian Gospels have been replaced by readings from Mein Kampf. In the League of German Maidens, the compulsory youth organization for girls, the religious rites of a mythical Aryan past are reenacted. The sun wisp swastika is carried in procession. The loom of fate and destiny of Nordic legend is woven once more. By 1939, the very word Christmas has been banned from official use. In children's books, there are no references to Christ, to angels or to shepherds. Instead, there are emissaries of nature and the power of the sun. Concerted efforts are being made to convert Christmas into a festival of light. In the National Socialist calendar, the summer solstice has become an official holy day. The swastika is revered as the sign of the sun and of creation. Ceremonial fires are lit all over the Reich. In nocturnal rituals, Fire incantations are recited by the assembled worshippers of the new Nordic faith. Consecration of the blood flag. On the 9th of November 1923, the fledgling National Socialist Workers' Party, led by Hitler, attempted to overthrow the government of Bavaria. In a Munich street, their advancing ranks were met by a volley of police gunfire. Sixteen are killed, including the stormtrooper marching beside Hitler. In the chaos, the swastika flag, carried in the front rank of marchers, is knocked to the ground and drenched in blood. The blood flag, entrusted to the guardianship of the SS, becomes the most sacred relic of the Nazi party. All new party banners must be consecrated by contact with the original blood flag. We do not want to have any other god. Only Germany proclaims Adolf Hitler. And in the doctrine of National Socialism, Germany is the race. Already the priesthood of the Aryan Empire of the future is in the process of creation. It is to come from the mystical brotherhood of the SS. The SS, first created as the personal bodyguard of the Fuhrer, will become a state within a state. Its members are chosen as the most perfect living examples of Aryan man. Even a single filled tooth will bar a candidate from entry to the racial elite of the Reich. Each applicant for SS membership must prove his German ancestry to 1750. He must undergo thorough instruction in racial biology. He must study the mystical destiny of Aryan man. He must be obedient without question and loyal to the death. In the Aryan Empire of the future, the SS are to be the incorruptible guardians of the purity of the race. It is from their ranks that a new breed will come. It is they who will pave the way for the next phase in human evolution. 
For the followers of the creed of the swastika, the Führer, Adolf Hitler, has been sent by Providence. It is his mission to lay the foundations for the coming Aryan millennium. During the Great War, Guido von Liszt revived an ancient Nordic prophecy. The strong one from above ends the faction. He settles everything with fair decisions. Whatever he ordains shall live forever. In reality, the thousand-year Reich will live for 12 years. In those 12 years, Adolf Hitler will preside over a nightmare of mass murder world war and the destruction of Germany itself. And yet, long before the rise of Hitler, or even the foundation of the National Socialist Party, the seeds had been sown. Germany had inherited a legacy which would pave the way to the most horrifying chapter in human history. The occult teachings of Madame Blavatsky, Guido von Liszt and their disciples, the Aryan fantasies of secret societies, the racial myths of militant nationalism, a legacy already inextricably bound to a symbol. Well, folks, I've been trying to tell you for a long, long time, and, to put it bluntly, and, as an understatement, you ain't heard nothing yet. Don't you dare miss tomorrow night or Wednesday night's episode of The Hour of the Time. If you listened closely tonight, and if you listen closely again tomorrow night, you will know why the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the new chairman appointed by... Clinton lied about his father, whom he said was not really a member of the SS, he was conscripted. There's no such thing as a conscripted member of the SS, ladies and gentlemen. The man is a liar. He's covering up his father's Nazi past and his willing, willing enlistment in the SS, and therefore must be, probably is, one of the ones who have received the heritage passed down from his father. And I don't believe he would be the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff if he were not a National Socialist. Remember, what you're learning is there really is nothing new under the sun. <laughs>